feedback on this news broadcast and our other news products. Tonight, former President Uhuru Kenyatta's technical advisor, Mutahi Nguni, has lifted the lid on the goings-on at State House in the months of heightened campaigns against William Ruto, who was by then only a hopeful deputy president eyeing the top seat. Nguni, who only four days ago declared to have shifted camp to Ruto's Kenya Kwanzaa, says that so deliberate were the efforts that at some point they financed Ruto's party leader George Wajakoya's manifesto launch to reduce the hype on Ruto's. And as our senior political affairs reporter, Ibrahim Karanja, puts it, Goni, while agreeing with those who dismissed him as a political dog for hire, says he is a dog of war and a mercenary of public good. Take a look. After close to 10 years of serving as a technical advisor to retired President Uhuru Kenyatta, Mutahi Nguni's sudden about turn four days ago did not come as a surprise to many owing to the frequent party hopping witnessed lately. But in Nguni's crossover, the curtains are being drawn, giving Kenyans a clear view of what was happening in their time of basking in the presidential glory. Nguni says that his support for Azimio leader Raila Odinga was a coercion, especially after his idea, initially aimed at propelling Ruto to power, the Hustler versus Dynasty narrative sent a scare to the fourth president. Uhuru's argument was that uh, this will end up hurting some of us. And I said, in any case, you will not be running for president. What was the problem with it? Uh, let us do it and at least propel uh, your deputy into office. But when I did that, I was um, actually asked to stop. At some point, I would want to reveal that my accounts were frozen two times. The result was the freezing of his accounts by the KRA and the Assets Recovery Authority. His ability the man who ran an endless online and ground strategy campaign against Ruto now says that it is in fact President Kenyatta who defected from the Jubilee Party by virtue of denouncing the party position. Actually defected from the original idea uh, of uh, uh, Jubilee was actually Uhuru Kenyatta when he decided to support Raila Odinga. Uh, and because I was supporting uh, Uhuru and Ruto, both of them, from my 2013 when I did the tyranny of numbers, um, uh, Uhuru came as a surprise to me when he said that uh, the direction now is a uh, William Ruto. I remember we had that conversation. I told him I have a problem with the, um, trying to sell Raila in central Kenya. And I said that the wave uh, for Ruto has really peaked and this will be quite problematic. After being subdued to support Odinga, Nguni is also making public some of the consistent plans allegedly committed to puncture Ruto's pace, one of them being sponsoring the manifesto launch of Ruto's party presidential candidate, Professor George Ojakoya. The Kenya Kwanzaa Manifesto. To coincide with that of the then Kenya Kwanzaa presidential candidate, William Ruto. Yeah. And so I got a little bit of it from uh, um, the friends of Uru Kenyatta. And we, we funded the Wajakoya <laughs> launch. And, and the way we did it is that we, uh, we, we, we wanted it to be launched on the same day that Ruto was doing his launch. And our thinking was that Ruto is of a, a choleric temper. So... I wanted to do this as a way of irritating him, so that when uh, you're on, on the screens, you have half screen. Well, Jacoya is speaking here and Ruto is speaking here. And that's exactly what happened. And but with all this, he still admits that top government officials were just not ready or were clueless on how to deliver a win for Odinga. I remember uh, telling him, Dino Yaran is in charge of this election and running it. You know you're the one who is in charge of ensuring that we have victory but in the past we had Kiamba that we lost 
we had uh, Juja that we lost, we cannot afford to lose this election on behalf of Uhuru Kenyatta. And uh, Kebiso tells me, who told you I'm in charge of this election? I have absolutely no role in it. Then I ask him, have you, do you have any connection with the, the Tinga uh, team, that is the Raila team? And he says, I have absolutely no link. So I was one who was now giving him some links on how, how to begin work. And this is way into the thick of the campaign. So looking at that, and wondering uh, uh, if you, who runs a provincial administration, you're not in charge of this election, then who is? That William Ruto, then as deputy president, was a man under siege, has been stated before. But Mutahinguni has painted the picture from an insider's perspective of the lengths the sidelining had gotten to. This used to disturb me a lot was the fact that uh, he used to use the same washroom as the rest of us, as deputy president. Well, as uh, the rest, some few people had the privilege of using different facilities. The chief of staff uh, and the head of public service has a, a washroom that is red carpeted with golden bar, you know, uh, tops. Um, I used to ask myself, well, wouldn't Ruto be allowed to use at least that facility? After his defection, which according to him is a journey back home, Nguni has been accused as being a political lapdog, an accusation he does not deny. I'm a dog of war for a mercenary for public good. You see, what has happened is that... Um, who Kenyatta has retired. William Muto has been in power for one, uh, one year now, almost. But who Kenyatta has refused to exit the stage. Yet he still faults Ruto's government for what he says is abandoning the hustler's narrative. According to Nguni, he has since asked for forgiveness from President Ruto and that he is working towards reconciling the current head of state with his predecessor. Well, call it moving with the tide or changing his minds in keeping with the facts. The main fact is Mutahinguni's shift in alliance has not only dented Azimio's image and their election malpractice narrative, but has also exposed the laid-back attitude exuded by those who are perceived to be the executioners of the Azimio plan in the run-up to the presidential election. Ibrahim Karanja, NTV. All right, for more on that interview with Washington Gikunju, our managing editor, planning and news desk, do purchase your copy of the Sunday Nation. You will find more of it there. And uh, so you can do so. Roll out of bed, grab your device, type in epaper.nation.africa, and you will have it literally at your fingertips. And uh, this is what the front page of the Sunday Nation looks like. And uh, if your device does not allow 